There are many types of spy. We have the trick stabber, the face stabber, the tele camper, the sneaky spy, the I meant to click on the sniper class spy, the I wonder if that friendly spy is an enemy spy spy, the amusingly bad spy, the annoyingly good spy, and of course, the flying spy. But all of these can be counted, so get comfy, listen close, and I hope you enjoy dealing with spies. So I've broken this video down into five parts, and the first one being how to avoid spies. So to avoid spies, there's a few simple techniques, simple habits you can pick up. The first one I'm going to look at is simply moving erratically. You tend to want to avoid just walking in a straight line. Instead, strafing, jiggling about, it might just make that spy miss their backstab, get flustered and get caught out. So in this example on Thunder Mountain, I knew there was a spy around. So as I walk across this little bridge, instead of just going straight across it, I'm going to do a little jiggle. I'm going to be moving left and right and hopefully throw the spy off. In this case, I catch him in the corner of my eye trying to get that stab and so I'm able to drop down and escape the situation. Another place where I find that I'm using this technique a lot is of course when you're setting up your buildings as an engineer by just rotating around it, keeping it as random as possible, it can really put off those spies. Another technique I use for avoiding spies is basically to take weird and unusual routes, especially when you're rolling out to the front lines. So these are a couple of genuine examples that I use, jumping up on kind of fences, awkward to reach places, obviously looking behind you as you go. It can just make it a little bit more tricky for a spy looking to ambush you. Next up, if you are spooked, a classic technique is the old back to the wall or back to the corner technique. If a spy is good, however much you are looking around, they can sometimes get in there and do a cheeky backstab. So by having your back to a wall, you feel an awful lot safer. And bear in mind, it doesn't literally have to be a wall. On barn blitz, I often sort of back up to this cliff edge here, and I feel pretty safe here because I'm pretty sure a spy can't jump up and backstab me. This idea applies really well again to the engineer who, when they're setting up their buildings, they want to consider where their teammates are going to be standing. The best example is, of course, the teleporter, making sure that as they come out of the teleporter, their back is against the wall in a corner. And finally, a little extra tip that I've heard a bunch of spies mention, actually. They tend to recommend that you do not backpedal. So that basically means walking backwards. By doing this, it just makes it really easy for the spy to kind of see you coming and take that opportunity. So it's generally speaking worth avoiding. OK, so the next part of this video is going to be about finding the spy. The obvious thing to do is, of course, spy check. You should regularly be looking behind you, although unfortunately it can often be that first backstab of the game that reminds you to do this. But yeah, keep checking your back and different classes have to do this more often than others. So for example, as a medic, you might find that perhaps 50% of your time you're actually looking behind you. It's of course especially important to check behind you during rollouts. That's when spies love to ambush you the most. And something that I picked up is that at the beginning of a map, when the spawn doors open, at approximately the 10 second mark, you start to check your back because this is approximately how long it takes for the enemy to cloak, get behind your team, disguise and start doing some work. And the other part of the game that I find you are at a much higher risk of being backstabbed is just before you're about to cap a point or an objective of any kind. A really good example here on Upward, I'm having a really good game, pushing the cart right to the end and I'm pretty sure I've got this in the bag but as you can see I'm constantly checking behind me and it's a good job because at the last minute this spy goes in for the kill but I'm able to catch him and finish him off. And of course you can spy check more proactively, instead of just looking behind you occasionally, you can actually go out your way, throw grenades at your teammates, or obviously as a pyro, spy check teammates, all that good stuff. Sometimes I find myself walking through a teammate just really quick to check, although this can be quite risky as they might try and do a sneaky matador stab. Another obvious one to look out for is of course the spy bump, but yeah if you bump a spy there's a good chance they're going to uncloak nearby so keep a lookout for that. Obviously you can't just spy check everyone all the time. You kind of want to be on the lookout for strange behavior, for cues or for tells, anything that looks suspicious. There are loads of things to look out for. One of the big ones is if there's a friendly guy coming from the enemy spawn, there's a good chance that could be a spy. Or if there's a friendly sniper just making a beeline straight for one of your sentry guns, it's a good chance it could be a spy. 
Or if you see a teammate with the exact same loadout and unusuals as yourself, you never know, it could be a spy. A bunch of other cues that come to mind are ghost doors that magically open, metal that miraculously disappears, and I don't know if you guys have noticed, but spies really love calling for medic when they're disguised. And the last thing I wanted to mention is around the whole thing with the wall hacks you get when you're spawning. If you see a friendly in a ridiculous location, there's a good chance it's a spy. This kind of needs to be fixed. I'm not sure the best way to go about doing this. I feel a little bit bad when this happens. This poor guy, literally just wall hacks. For the next part of this video, we're gonna be talking about hunting them because when it's safe, it's worth the chase. I'm sorry about that, that was pretty cringy. Want to kill myself now, let's move on. Be wary though, because they are pretty speedy, being the second fastest class alongside the medic. But yeah, when you're hunting them down, if they're trying to go invisible, you basically wanna spread that damage out as much as possible. The heavy and pyro are great at doing this, just scanning an entire area. Explosive damage is another great way of doing this. Throwing some kind of juice at them is of course ideal. And I find that the scout can be really great at hunting them down because you can use your scatter gun to kind of track them down and keep them momentarily visible which will give you a clue as to which direction they're going in and then it's only a matter of time until their cloak runs out. Another great tip for spies that are trying to escape, if you've injured them there's a really good chance they're going to be heading to the nearest med pack like you're seeing in this example here on Gold Rush. This guy's blatantly a spy, I get a bit of damage out onto him, there's a good chance he's going to head to that health pack so I'm going to throw one more sticky over there to finish him off just before he grabs the health. This same logic applies to when you're trying to kind of read where a completely invisible spy has gone. If a spy has gone completely invisible and you're using something like the grenade launcher, you're going to have a very low success rate at actually hitting them. But it's usually worth a shot because in most cases, there's only two or three directions they're probably going to go in. So it's worth picking one of those directions and shooting a Hail Mary grenade. A great example here on Dust Bowl. I completely scuff all of my shots here, but then I collect myself. And because I know he's going down this tunnel, when I reach the end, I think he might do a U-turn. He might go left, but there's a very good chance he's going to head straight into that building. I shoot a pipe into the doorway and I'm able to take him out. One more example here. This spy has escaped down these two crates. When he gets to the end of there, he's either going to turn left or right. So I may as well take my chances and time it right to take a shot, assuming he went in this direction. Unfortunately, I don't get to see where he goes next. So I just throw out a few extra grenades just in case, and then I go on my way. If the spy managed to get away, then another great tip is just to look in corners. Spies tend to love hiding in their little corners, out of harm's way. So it's always worth having a little look to see if you can catch one out. So the final part of this section on hunting down spies, I wanted to talk about taking caution when you are following spies, especially when heading for stairs or around corners. Because you may have noticed that some spies like to think of themselves as MLG trick stabbers. Very often you can feign following them and bait out the trick stab and watch them leap through the air and then take them out quite easily. We're now going to enjoy a very small compilation of failed trick stabs that I've collected over the last few months. Okay, so you've found them, you've chased them down. What about when you're head to head with a spy and you're dueling them? If they catch you with low health or if you're alone, a spy may attempt to 1v1 you. And when you're up real close, it can be quite dangerous because when you're in melee range, there are all sorts of face stabbing and backstabbing opportunities that can arise. So first of all, try not to panic. I personally would never panic. I'm a veteran at this game, just, it just wouldn't happen. <clears throat> Be cautious of running into one or past one. In the same way you should be cautious when you're chasing them upstairs or around corners. If you're heading into one, like in this example here, they might try and do something fancy. I'm not sure exactly what this guy had in mind, but in this case, I just hold off for a second before coming through this doorway, see what he's up to, and then take him out. 
If you're dueling a spy, ideally you want to keep your distance a little bit. So for example, if you're playing Demo Man, you might want to use your grenade launcher or sticky bomb launcher, keep them at their distance, just so you can completely avoid the potential of the insta-kill. Although, be wary, if you are low, then a competent spy will very often be able to pistol you down quite easily. And finally, if you're fighting them one-on-one, -on -one and they are in melee range, then if you're using a class like Demo Man or Soldier, you're probably better off switching to melee, because this way you can avoid self-damage. So I wanted to spend some time talking about the Dead Ringer, and because there's quite a few tips to go through, I thought it warranted its own section. Usually, a spy who has just used the Dead Ringer is pretty easy to spot. If, like we mentioned before, they're coming straight from spawn, and you ever so slightly graze their knee, and then they immediately die, there's a good chance they may have Dead Ringered. If you're not sure, it's often worth shooting one more grenade for luck. Now, the Dead Ringer has a very distinctive loud sound when it uncloaks, so of course you should be listening out for that. But there are loads of other tells, loads of other little things to look out for in your gameplay that might just give you that clue as to whether that spy is still alive or not. For example, no hit sound is played. It blows my mind that I never noticed this. Another really important reason to turn on hit sounds. Aside from this, I'm just going to run through a few of the other hints to look out for. So, Dominations or Revenges are faked in the kill feed and you hear the sound but you won't see the icon on the scoreboard. If you have a kill streak weapon, you won't see the kill streak increase. If the enemy spy is on a kill streak, you won't see their kill streak being reset. And there are some more obvious cues such as the disguising smoke puff may continue its animation, a pretty obvious one that we've all seen. The critical hit or mini crit text above the spy may continue to follow them as they cloak. This was just a few of the more interesting ones, but I've popped a link in the description that gives a more comprehensive list for those of you who are interested. And another interesting fact that's kind of related is that if you're playing Medic and you're using the Uber Saw, if you hit an enemy disguised spy, it won't actually grant you Uber Charge, which is something worth bearing in mind. Okay guys, there we have it. Those were my tips on dealing with the spy. If you think I've missed anything out, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. As always, thank you very much for watching this video and for your comments. Check out down below for links to my Discord, my Twitter and my Twitch account and all that good stuff. A very quick thank you to Frank the Tank 64 and Rudolph for your item donations. I very much appreciate it. Thank you very much and I'll see you guys in the next video.